Hello everyone, my name is Maria Koneva and today I'm going to talk about reactive error handling in Angular. I'm going to touch upon some RxJS operators, error handling strategies, different error types, and the ways you can handle them. Let me introduce myself. I work as front-end technology lead at Aleri Solutions, we're a small company based in Germany, providing digital solutions for our clients. In my spare time, I like discovering new places and writing articles for ng-conf. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a line via email or on Twitter or LinkedIn. Let's start with our topic. Why error handling in the first place? We write web applications that run uh, client-side, so we cannot be sure what, ha what really happens there. But what we can be sure about is that whatever can go wrong will go wrong sooner or later. So we have to be prepared for this. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Well, kidding. That's just to prove a point that errors can, have, can happen anytime. Everyone can write web applications. But if you want to stand out, you have to write applications that provide great user experience. And error handling is part of it. Additionally, if you don't handle errors at all and just lock them on the console, you might give away too much of implementation details um, that can be used against you by hackers. And of course, we want to improve with every single iteration. So we have to know what happened. For this, we have to log and track our errors so that we can optimize our software with every single release. So let's have a look at errors and error causes. Since our applications run in the browser, we might face internal errors, usually JavaScript errors, such as unhandled promise rejection. On the other side, our errors might come from outside, such as HTTP error responses. And sometimes we have to deal with some things that, um, that are not technical errors per se, but are considered as errors by the business side. For example, um, negative values in the H input field. In my presentation, I'm going to focus on external errors because um, they are the most unexpected ones. We cannot control them, and yet we have to be prepared. So let's have a look at a different error classification. First of all, uh, you might face validation errors. And I'm not talking about client-side validation, which you have to implement in the first place, but about the server-side validation errors. For example, um, postal code CTMS match. The second type are the uh, known classical errors, something like um, the server is not available. You might also uh, have to deal with silent errors. Those are errors um, that the user doesn't care about. Uh, he or she wouldn't just notice. And the last but not the least, unexpected, unexpected unknown errors. They still can happen. Let's have a look how to deal with them. First of all, um, in case of a validation error, be specific as specific as possible and give your user the chance to change the input so that the second request is successful. If the server is not available, um, you have to inform the user what went wrong and provide some solution, some plan B, maybe um, to suggest to fill in, in a form and send an email. If it's a silent error or the, the error that the user doesn't care about, maybe you failed to, to display some advertisement or some banner, some teaser or something, just go poker face. Don't display anything in the UI. And how do you expect the unexpected? Well, you just have to provide a fallback scenario for all the other errors you, that you haven't thought about. Let's briefly talk about the reactive part of uh, my topic. In the reactive programming, um, everything can be considered at the stream of data. Philosophically speaking, writing a web application is nothing but just moving around data. So you push your data and you have to react upon it instead of pulling it and acting in the imperative programming. So in this respect, 
errors is nothing else but an undesired interruption of the data stream and error handling is nothing else but the attempt to restore this data flow. With this being said, let's move on. Let's have a look at some Eric's chess operators. We'll start with catch error because this one is the most relevant one for error handling. It catches the error and then we can decide if we would like to return a new observable or to rethrow the error. If we decide to return a new observable, the so-called catch and replace strategy, then we can make use of our next operator, off operator. It is not specific to error handling, but in our use case, it helps us to wrap the uh, default value as an observable and return it. Let's have a look at our marble diagram. The error happens here. We catch it and then replace by the default values that uh, our off operator provides. It can be null or any other value that you consider as meaningful if the service fails. Let's have a look at syntax. Catch error expects a function as parameter. And this function itself takes two parameters, error and source observable. It returns the so-called operator function, which is either the source observable or any replacement for it. For example, our observable with default values. So what you can do is to return the source observable and then resubscribe to it, implementing the basic retry functionality. You could also return error and pass it to some um, error handling method, or you can delegate the whole error handling to some other service and method. Let's have a look at the last use case. So let's say handle error is our error handling method. We can even pass some parameters in here, for example, an error message that we would like to display. This method returns another method which takes error response as a parameter and returns an observable. In here, we can do whatever we would like to with our error response, tracking, logging, um, sending some notifications, but we have to return an observable at the end. In our case, it's just null because this is our default value. Here are further RxJS operators for error handling. For example, you can use throw error if you need to propagate um, the error and need to handle it in your component. That would be catch and rethrow strategy. The marble diagram for this is very simple. Retry and retry when help you to increase the success rate of your requests. However, with, you still have to decide what you'd like to do with your error if it happens again, to replace it or to rethrow it. Now we're ready to have a look at the code. Known validation errors. Um, let's say you have just a basic form with one input field with some error message and a button. So what you can do is um, you can use catch error, error RxJS operator and check for the validation error status code, which in my case is 422. And then you just um, set this validation error to true and display your, uh, your error message. You can handle other errors here too. But just imagine that you use send form uh, multiple times across your application, and you have to duplicate or copy paste your code, which is never a good idea. I think we can do better than this. Let's have a look. First of all, you can use HTTP interceptor provided by Angular. So you just implement the interface. And the nice um, thing is that you can retry your request, which is really user-friendly. You can again use catch error for this. And within this method, you can could uh, refresh token if the user is unauthorized. You could even differentiate between um, JavaScript errors and HTTP error responses because you need to handle them differently when you track them because they have a slightly different stack trace. Uh, however, the solution has a drawback. Um, you cannot be really specific about the um, request that failed. So imagine you have um, three requests in your application for storing personal data, contract data, and bank details. You cannot provide a really specific error message uh, if just one of them fails. So let's um, have a look at a different solution. 
So we can put our error message in the separate component, error component in our case, which is just a red text, and subscribe to the notification of the error notification service. Then we can just display whatever we get from the service um, in our component. Our error notification service looks like this. It's just a, a simple behavior subject. And in our service, we can just call next on this notification and uh, provide the specific error message, with, which then will be displayed in our error component. With this solution, you can be very specific about uh, your requests. However, uh, imagine if you have to log and track your errors as well, so you will repeat this part of your code over and over again. So we can do better than this. So let's introduce error handling service. In handle error method, you just can um, provide additional functionality. In my case, I want to handle known errors differently. So my known errors are 400, 401, and 403. And in this case, I want to uh, display um, a specific error message in my error component. And if something unexpected happens, I want to implement a different behavior, for example, a redirect to an error page. But you can have um, tracking, logging, whatever you want in here. So you can use this service as follows. You just call handle error and pass the very specific error message and the rest is uh, being handled by the error handling service. So next type of error, silent errors. Let's say you wanna load some banner and uh, it fails. The user doesn't know that the banner should be there. So if it fails, um, an error message would rather confuse him or her than help. So in this case, you just don't show anything on your UI and you just can return null as if the service is up and running and doesn't return anything. The last but not the least, unknown errors. Angular provides a default error handler, which just uh, locks your errors on the console. However, it's not the best way to handle your errors in production, because again, you might give away too much of implementation details that can be used by hackers. Um, Additionally, you might still want to log and track your errors um, in your error handler. And finally, um, you might implement a, a unified behavior for all the unexpected errors, such as redirect to an error page. Your custom implementation of error handler could look like this. You just extend the error handler, override the handle error method. Uh, in my case, it just redirect to the error page, but you can add any other functionality. Don't forget to provide it in your ng module and you're done. Well, not yet. Don't forget about testing. Here are some code examples in Jest. If you'd like to test error handling in your component, you can just mock service method that might return an error and mock throw error. Don't forget to subscribe in your component method though. If you'd like to test error handling in your service, you can flash HTTP service response and place your expect statement in the error function. Now the tricky part, how to test error handling in your error handling service. You can create HTTP error response, throw it, catch it, and then call your handle error method, just like consuming services would do. You can expect all the internal implementations in here. Whoa, we've covered a lot. So basically, error handling can be represented as a set of sieves or filters to filter out all the um, possible or unexpected errors um, so that it's always sunny in the user's world. That's what I consider a great user experience. However, error handling is by no means a justification for bad UX. So if those errors could happen in the first place, that's you who's to blame. So first of all, you have to eliminate all those loopholes for those errors and only then provide support if something goes wrong. Thank you for your attention and happy error handling.